welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Abbey Normal. <laughs> Today we're going to bring to you 1972's Raw Meat, a.k.a. Deathline. <laughs> yeah. It is directed by Gary Sherman. He also directed Poltergeist 3. He also directed a very, very good horror movie, which we covered last year, called Dead and Buried. It stars the legend Donald Pleasance. Also along with him is Norman Rosington. He's been in, again, tons of stuff. Just to name one, A Hard Day's Night with the Beatles. <laughs> the Beatles. The Beatles. And Christopher Lee makes a very brief cameo in this movie. The movie starts off very groovy. We see this uh, sort of English posh gentleman goes down to the tube station and he sees this girl waiting there. Come on, come on, how much? <laughs> I'm not a prostitute. <laughs> well, luckily I can afford to find out. Yeah. She all knees him right in the nuts. <laughs> and he started hearing all these weird grunting noises and all these <laughs> weird sounds, right? And it gets closer and closer to him, and you see a look of horror on his face. Patricia and Alex, they get off at that station, right? And when they're walking up the stairs, they see somebody <laughs> just laying <laughs> like one of many of our nights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he even says, oh, in New York, you just step over these guys. <laughs> he just, he's just a drunk. He's just a drunk, and he keeps saying it over and over. He's just a drunk. <laughs> get his name, all his identification and stuff from his wallet. They go up to go get an English Bobby. They go back down to find this guy and he's gone. We get introduced to Donald Pleasance playing Calhoun and he's the the top <laughs> inspector here. Can we get some tea here? Tea? <laughs> they come in a bag now? Yeah. Uh, he's all got that dart. dart? Nah. <laughs> It comes to his attention that this sort of well-to-do man is missing. They go to his apartment or like his house and he starts like eating all these like sweets of his and drinking all his brandy yeah. and everything. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden there's a noise behind him. They look and it's Christopher Lee and he basically tells him to fuck off. That's his bit part yes. and not so many words <laughs> fuck off. They go back to the police station where one of the colleagues tells them a little bit of the history of like the tube tunnels. In 1892, there ended up being a, a cave-in, and there was men and women that were buried, but the company went bankrupt and they didn't have enough money to dig them out, so they essentially just let them fucking die. Like nobody, <laughs> nobody was gonna help them? Yeah, like, like not even townsfolk yeah, or anything? Just, like, yeah, <laughs> that's it. So how did they survive? Well, we assume they ate each other. It then cuts to the shot and you just see this dark tunnel and just hear this dripping. You see this severed hand all eaten up and bloody. And it's this really long shot and it pans to all these dead bodies. And you eventually get to this man hunched over this woman, this pregnant woman. They all both look sick. She dies and this man loses yeah. his mind. Mick Fleetwood this type. Is Mick Fleetwood <laughs> guy, you know. <laughs> he goes berserk. Starts going berserk and stuff and eventually makes his way into the tube station. Takes a shovel and puts it right in between this guy's head and he kind of comes out of the darkness. The other two guys get freaked out and take a broom and start beating this poor guy in, the, in his wounds. He's got all these flesh wounds from, I guess, like scurvy and stuff. And oh, yeah, pales one guy with a broomstick. Calhoun and his partner, they're kind of hitting a brick wall here with this investigation. Let's, let's get go. some pints. Yeah, let's get a pint of beer. All right, let's get pissed. <laughs> Johnny, shots. Doubles. Doubles. I legitimately think that he was drunk when they shot this. Because we all know Donald Pleasance was a piss tank. <laughs> yeah. The same night Patricia and Alex are taking the tube home again and she forgets her textbook. He says, oh, hold on, I'll go get it for you. And he goes in, door shuts, the tube takes off. He's like, I'll meet you back home. <laughs> she gets taken. Patricia wakes up and she's in this strange layer, and this man is on top of her, <laughs> drooling. <laughs> and that's where we're gonna end the plot points. If you wanna find out what happens at the end of Raw Meat or Deathline, 
<laughs> Keep watching the damn movie. One of the best things about this movie, the characters, right? Yeah. Calhoun, mm -hmm. Donald Pleasant's character, they flesh him out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. With a lot of the subtleties too, like the darts. Yeah. He's always got that dart that he takes the tea bag out with. <laughs> throws it in the garbage. And then you always see in the background on the door of his office that dart board, but none of the darts are actually <laughs> close to the dart board. Once his tea doesn't like it in a bag. Yeah, exactly. Know? This new fangled tea bag. It's a little too much for me. Too there. much for me. <laughs> tea in a bag. Holy shit. Patricia, the, the, the bleeding heart. Mm hmm. And then she's coupled up with Alex, the kind of. Harden American who's like, yeah. yeah, in New York we just step over these guys. You got that kind of clash of American versus the British. Actually make the British look a bit more, yeah. we're a little bit better because we care for our own and you <laughs> Americans just step over the poor. The man that they call him. You even feel sorry for him. The first scene you see him in, he is grieving over his dying what you assume his wife is pregnant mm. wife what kind of existence is this yeah he's alone down there yeah and like no wonder he's gonna go fucking nuts like i think anybody yeah. would he obviously has access to the real world now because mm -hmm. he can come out into the subway and kill people and take them back to his lair but he won't go further than that. Yeah, he's afraid, he's kind afraid of afraid to go any further than what he's comfortable with. He could just wander into society and leave that awful layer that he's got and live in the sunlight, but he can't out of his comfort zone, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. It's almost like an urban legend. The subway and like the tube, dark, dank, mysterious. As soon as the train disappears through the tunnel and you see the blackness, what's beyond that? Yeah. You don't know. You always right? wonder. Now we yeah. know. Do you sympathize with everybody? Mm -hmm. Like even the, the the bad guy, if you can call him the bad guy. The Mick see, Fleetwood guy. The Mick Fleetwood guy. <laughs> the Mick Fleetwood cannibal. There's balls. <laughs> there's balls hanging there. See through his eyes. It's like, man, this is awful. And then like when Patricia wakes up laying there and he's on top of her and you think, what if I was in that position? I just woke up and there was this drooling... Madman, madman was all <laughs> deformed and on top of me. Like, what would be going through my head? It'd be complete fear. You put yourself in these people's shoes, and that's where the horror from this movie comes from. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And I think what he wants is just another companion. Yeah. So when he takes Patricia, it's kind of like you know, stay. But, yeah, yeah. Please stay, but. He kind of doesn't yeah. know how to relate that to he can't, her, right? He can't communicate. The whole atmosphere of this movie, that whole dark, dreary, claustrophobic atmosphere of a subway tunnel mm -hmm. is perfect. And Donald Pleasance, he's always rubbing his nose and, you know, his nose is always runny. Yeah. So you get the sense that, like, it's always dreary and cold yeah. and damp. Just so, like the tunnels. Just like the tunnels, yeah. yeah. So it's like, they're all living in it, yeah. kind of. Even that's though really he's not in the tunnels, He's still kind of in the tunnel. <laughs> exactly. Know? And the effects in this movie, spot on. Top like, notch. When they show the dead bodies kind of sprawled out amongst this layer. <laughs> yeah. They look legitimately dead. And that whole long shot, that's one, I think, I think it's one continuous shot. It's impressive. Would have liked to have seen, though, is a little more cat and mouse between the cannibal guy, the Mick Fleetwood guy, and the, the rescue party. And the title, raw, raw Meat, is, you know, kind of thinking Death Line is better because it takes place in the subway, Death Line. Raw Meat kind of makes sense, too, because that's all he has to eat. Is, yeah, is just raw, raw meat. meat. Yeah. He's got no sunlight, no vegetables. <laughs> that's why he's all Scurvy bubbled up. up yeah, just, <laughs> yeah. If you haven't seen Raw Meat or Death Line and you like good, raw, claustrophobic dark horror. Mm -hmm. You have to check it out. Till next time, mind the doors!